Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Yesterday when I closed the lecture uh, talking about convex sets, we had talked, spoken about a lot of convex sets, the various types of convex sets, their properties and we said that we are going to talk about convex functions today. But before we do so, let me start by telling you about a very important class of convex sets which is fundamental to optimization basically because it is a part of linear programming which is a very important part of optimization. So, these types of sets are called polyhedral sets. So, polyhedral set say P can be expressed as an intersection of finite number of half spaces. So, there is a i uh, where i belongs, i runs from 1 to k or m or whatever some index basically. So, if you look at a so for example, if you take something like this or this. So, this for example, it would be a polyhedral set, right. So, the feasible sets of linear programming problems which we have already studied are always polyhedral. So, of LP problem, feasible sets of LP problem are always polyhedral. So, this is a very, very important thing and hence knowing the properties of polyhedral sets are important when you study optimization, but we will not put all our efforts in studying the properties of polyhedral sets at this moment, but rather concentrate on start studying uh, having a broad view of convex sets and convex functions and a specific property of convex sets like polyhedrality would be discussed when and when it is actually required. So, now we will start talking about convex functions. Now, I told you in, in the last part one lecture that okay, you can define a convex function over whole R n or you can define a convex function over a convex set C. So, it means there are certain convex functions which cannot be defined over the whole space. It, it cannot be defined over some parts of the set and can be defined only on a particular convex set belonging to R n. So, which, but how do I unify this in a common framework and how do I say that okay, I will define every function, every convex function on whole of R n rather than defining some for R on R n some on a particular convex set C. So, this will force us to introduce the notion of an extended valued function so r bar is nothing but the standard real line r union two elements plus infinity and minus infinity of course if you take any a as a real number you have a plus infinity is equal to infinity plus a this is one rule which is quite natural. A is element of R and A minus infinity minus infinity plus A is equal to infinity, so, sorry minus infinity. So, these are standard rules which you can make out this adding if I keep on adding something very big to a number it will only grow or if I subtract a large huge amount from a number it will only keep on reducing. So, of course, the questions are with multiplication. So, if A is element of R, 
a into infinity is equal to infinity into a, then what? Of course, it is equal to a if a is not equal to 0. See, when I am taking a, a is element of r means I am not considering these two numbers, right? it is only here. Now, the question is if a is equal to 0, what would happen? In convex analysis, among the convex analysis, there are controversies in what to take, what is the meaning of this thing 0 into infinity, what does this, what does it mean? Now, you must be wondering that, okay, can we put it 0? Some say no, for convex analytic point of view, possibly infinity is more meaningful. But we would follow the assumption or the rule taken by Rockefeller and Wetz in their famous book Variational Analysis and we will consider it to be infinity. So, this convention, so this is a convention, this is not a mathematical certainty, it is convection, it is a con convention, sorry. So, this is taken from the book Variational Analysis by the famous Terry Rockefeller and R. J. V. Wetz a leader in stochastic optimization, one of the world's greatest optimizer. These two are obviously one of the world's greatest people <coughs> in this area. Now, of course, this okay. You might ask me the publisher, so it's Springer, 1998, and there is a corrected. There are a lot of errors, some printing errors, which is corrected in a 2004 print. Now the question comes what do you mean by this? This is not very difficult to think, it is just infinity, but what do I mean by this? In most cases, it would be undefined, in most books you will see that they have, they have no definition of this, undefined. We when we study convexity, we would hardly have any chance to face this situation, but in convexity, we cannot just forget about this aspect. The reason is very simple. We, if we want to define convex functions in the traditional way as the definition of Jensen, then in order to maintain the inequality, we need to have some convention for this. Again, infinity minus infinity is defined as plus infinity, this is called the Rockefeller weights convention. Now, you see, so I can now take a function from R n to R bar and define it in this fashion. So, for any x y in R n, we have for any lambda belonging to 0 1, f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda f of x, sorry 1 minus lambda x be less than or equal to lambda f of y plus 1 minus lambda f of x. So, this definition you already know, but you see the this convention. So, this is not a t, this is a plus. See what would happen, suppose if f y becomes 
plus infinity and this becomes f x becomes minus infinity. So, f y is plus infinity and f x becomes minus infinity. Then in order to maintain this inequality, this side should always be bigger than this side, you have to invoke this Rockefeller weights conven convention. So, okay, but this is a technical issue, we need not be too much bothered about it. Of course, epigraph of f for if this function is to be convex, epigraph of f is convex and vice versa. So, you might also define for such a class of functions epigraph of f to be con is the definition of convexity. I do not want to tell you what is epigraph of f if you already know this. Now, there is an important definition of a proper convex function. f is called proper if f of x is always strictly bigger than minus infinity and the set which is called the effective domain of f where the set of all x as that f x is strictly less than infinity that is the set of all x where f x is finite. So, there is at least one finite point, this cannot be non empty, this is called the effective domain. So, a convex function is called proper if this happens. So, we will largely deal with proper convex functions. Now, you see how this definition will be effective. Now, this is actually this is unified the way con you can look at convex functions. For example, if I define look at the function f x is equal to minus log of x where x is greater than 0. Now, you just look at log x. If you look at log x, you will observe one very simple thing that if you take the epigraph, it is not convex, but if you just take the negative, so it will be something like this. then the epigraph would be convex. So, this uh, function f x is a convex function, but it is not defined over whole of r n. So, in this case I can write dome of f is a set of all x in r such that x is strictly bigger than 0. So, I can define the function like this f x is equal to minus log x when x is strictly bigger than 0 and I can define this as plus infinity if x is less than equal to 0. So, you see I now have a I can define log function in this specific fashion and this is a convex function. So, f from r n to r bar is a proper convex function. Of course, there are uh, convex functions which are defined from r n to r, they take only finite values. For example, a very important class of function is the following. So, this is the quadratic problem. So, this is a quadratic function. Now, assume that this q belongs to S n plus that is q is p s d positive semi definite. Then f is convex, but I mind you that if you want to directly prove it by the definition of convexity, it will be very difficult to prove this to be convex. There are certain ways, certain very different ways one can prove different functions to be convex. For example, if you take this function, So, now look at this function, this is an important uh, convex function called the negative entropy function. So, again its domain 
is R n the interior of R n plus. So, domain of f is set of all x in R n such that x i is strictly greater than 0 for all i. Maybe some more examples. For example, this standard function f x is equal to norm of x. which measures the distance of the vector x from 0. So, this is of course, a function from R n to R and this is convex. Another important class of convex functions which is very, very useful when we do optimality conditions is the indicator function. So, the how the indicator function please be uh, careful to note that this is not the characteristic function of a set which takes the value 1 if the element x is in the set and it takes the value 0 if the element x is not in the set. Here it is like a penalty function which tells you that if x is in the set I do not charge you any money or any penalty, but if x is not in the set, I penalize you heavily by telling that okay, then your value becomes infinity that this is 0 if x is in C, of course, C is a convex set and this is plus infinity if x is not in C. Another class of functions for which are very important in convex and optimization is a support function of a convex set. See our set C is always convex, we are not going to repeat every time this is a convex set, convex set, convex set, because this convex optimization function is convex set is convex, there is nothing else. Support function of a set C is supremum x v. So, you are minimizing a linear functional over the set C, a convex set C. Now, if C is compact that is closed and bounded, then, then just note a very simple fact, then because this is a continuous function over a compact set, then this would become finite because you will have finite value, the supremum would be finitely attend. This is a very fundamental fact from optimization. C is compact then or what happens if C is not finite? That is the question. Sorry, C is not compact, very, very sorry. If C is not compact, sigma c may take the value now let me give you some other examples which could be interesting see apart from the norm when we have defined this norm when we say there is a convex function we are basically expecting you to write this function Basically, it is a Euclidean norm. Now, in this case, the unit ball defined by this norm that is norm of find every x as a norm of x is less than or equal to 1 would be this round ball which we everyone knows. Now, this is called the one norm which is defined as the addition of the absolute value of the components. So, 
So, it is you will also call the taxi cab you know on the Manhattan now. Another all of these are by the way convex functions, all of these are convex functions and very, very important convex function. It is called the infinity norm, which says of course, how homework prove that these functions are convex. Now, note this fact that how do you detect whether when a function is convex. Basically, for the quadratic case I told it will be very difficult to immediately pinpoint and say that this is a convex function or rather if when you try to calculate it out in a standard method trying to prove the convex inequality it is not such easy game. So, here let us find ways to detect convexity. A very important way is as follows. Let f be a twice continuously differentiable function. Then f is convex if and only if the Hessian matrix is PSD or positive semi definite at each x on R. So, this is I am talking about a finite valued function only or if you want over the dome f. Now, of course, I have not spoke told you what is the meaning of twice differentiability and what is the meaning of this term which I am calling as the Hessian matrix. So, what do you mean by twice differentiability? Let us segregate out and talk about twice differentiability. So, a function is twice differentiable if you have this sort of an expansion. there is a matrix A such that this happens plus small o of norm h square small o. That is if we divide by norm h square and norm h square goes to 0, this this that ratio goes to 0. Now, A can be proved by simple calculations to be the Hessian matrix at x. Now, what is this, what does this Hessian matrix look like? So, if f was a function for simplicity from r 2 to r, then f the Hessian matrix at x y basically is defined in this way. For those who know about Jacobian matrix, this is a Jacobian of the vector value function grad f. So, this can be written as follows del square f del x 
2 del square f del y del x del square f del x del y del square f del y 2. You see if this all of these things are continuous that is one when we say that the function is twice continuously differentiable we mean that all of these are continuous all the second order uh, mixed partial derivatives. So, which means that if that happens then this must be equal to this by Young's theorem and so then this matrix becomes symmetric. So, as a law in most cases when we are having twice continuously differentiable functions this matrix for f when f is twice continuously differentiable which we write in short as f element of C 2. Then grad square f x y is symmetric and hence we can talk about P s d positive semi definite. Now, you see when I am talking about this I am talking about also the gradient naturally because it is the Taylor's expansion, but remember one thing. So, now if I need to talk about this characterization, we need to talk about the characterization the first order characterization in terms of the derivative for a convex function. Because you see if I use this characterization then what would happen if you take a quadratic function f x this half is not really required it is only for you know making a making things look good when you take the derivative. Okay, let me first do the gradient the gradient of f x in this case is q x plus c and the grad square of f x is nothing but the matrix q. So, if q is p s d if this is p s d positive semi definite then this thing actually holds that it is positive semi definite for each x in r n and hence that will show that if q is p h d the quadratic function is convex, but in but if you really want to know the proof of this then we need to talk about how the gradient of a convex function is related to the convex function itself. So, suppose we want to tell something more about the convex function when the function is differentiable. In that case what we will do is that we will uh, do take this following thing let us look at this. So, let us look at f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda x is less than lambda f y plus 1 minus lambda f x. This is obviously true for all lambda in the open interval 0 1 naturally because the problem is convex. Now, I can rearrange this a bit and write this as f of x plus lambda y minus x is less than lambda f y plus 1 minus lambda f x, but again assuming that this function is differentiable just once I do not bother about twice at this moment. We can write this as f of x plus the gradient of f of x times lambda y minus x plus order of lambda is less than equal to lambda f y minus f x I am rearranging this part plus f x. Now, you know I can cancel off this part and now divide both, both sides by lambda. So, I will cancel off this f x with this f x and now divide by lambda. So, lambda is not 0 between 0 and 1 to get grad f x y minus x plus o lambda y lambda is less than equal to f y minus f x. Now, you know voila we are done we just have to take lambda going to 0. So, as lambda moves to 0 that is lambda becomes smaller and smaller 
we know that is lambda is positive and going down to 0, O lambda by lambda is also going to 0. Of course, those of you do not remember here more categorically it should be O lambda of norm y minus x, O, but does not matter because if you have a lambda term a multiplier term scalar multiplier then it becomes the O term of the lambda itself. So, this should show that thus f of y minus f of x is grad of f x into y minus x and this is true for all y x in R n. Of course, I am assuming a differentiable function, I am assuming it to be over R n to R. Now, what about the converse? If there is a function question, now if there is a function from R n to R, such that f is differentiable which I am writing and short as d i f f and for all x y element of R n we have f y minus f x the question is then is f convex so this homework i'll give you the answer tomorrow for the time being let me try to prove that if i have a convex function then the hesian which is twice continuously differentiable that is if f is convex and c2 this implies that the Hesian matrix this is P s d for all x. So, now we are going to prove this statement. So, we know that f is convex. So, let us just write it down. Take two points x and y. Now, instead of writing the convexity definition here, we will assume the, the we will make use of this one that f is in C 2 and write this as f x plus the gradient of f x lambda times y minus x plus half lambda square y minus x grad square f x into y minus x plus small o of lambda square. Now, look at this uh, fact. Now, here is where we will use convexity. So, I can write this whole thing as half of sorry or lambda square by 2 times y minus x grad square of f x y minus x plus o of lambda square is equal to f of x plus lambda y minus x minus f x minus grad f x into lambda y minus x. But if you look at this just from here, you can immediately know that this whole thing by the convexity of f is greater than 0 by convexity of f. So, what remains here is lambda square by 2 y minus x grad square 
f x y minus x plus o lambda square is greater than equal to 0. Now, what do I do with this? Divide by lambda square? Uh, let me, I may, okay, we choose a lambda of course, between 0 and 1. This is a standard trick. Divide by lambda square and take lambda going to 0, that is lambda square also going to 0, because it is just positive quantity. And this would imply y minus x grad square f x y minus x. Now, take any w in R n and set, because this y is any y in R n, y is equal to x plus w. And this will show that this thing, this in a product is greater than or equal to 0 for all w in R n. This again shows that grad square f x is P s d. So, by definition. So, this is just P s d by definition and you see, if you observe here, we have done the whole thing simply. In fact, instead of this, if you could, you could have write it f of x plus lambda w, y minus x as w and do the whole thing it would have been the same. We did this because it is much more easy to view and uh, because it is linked with convexity and now let us look at the converse. Now, you take any uh, x and y and then let us see what happens, because this is given to be P s d for each x. So, if you those who know about Taylor's expansion for them it will be much simpler to understand f i is equal to f x plus the gradient of f x into y minus x. So, the order term that comes after the second order expansion can be pulled into the second order expansion by writing this as half of y minus x grad square f z y minus x, where z is a element strictly inside the line segment connecting x and y. Right. So, it is not the interval x and y, but the line segment x and y. So, z is written as lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y, where lambda is strictly between 0 and 1. So, what I can now write is f y minus f x minus grad f x y minus x. This becomes greater than equal to 0, because this is greater than equal to 0, but z is any element in R n and this is a positive semi definite and y minus x is an element in R n. So, this is just greater than equal to 0. So, this whole thing is greater than equal to 0, showing that f y minus f x is greater than equal to grad f x into y minus x and y and x are arbitrary pairs, just arbitrary elements. So, this is true for every y and x. You, you see this is we have we have asked you the converse that if this happens whether it is convex the answer is yes and you really have to figure it out. So, you have to figure it out how is it convex. So, once if I have a function which satisfies this you can be sure it is convex. So, immediately you have the fact that f is convex. Now, a very important point issue from the optimization point of view. Now, we know that if x is a local minimum of a convex problem, convex function, it is also global.
Now, let f be a differentiable convex function. and x bar be x bar be a local minimum now we have already said that if this happens that if there is a local minima and the function is differentiable then the gradient of f at x bar is equal to 0 now what happens when you have a point which satisfies grad of f x bar equal to 0 which is the local minimum point will satisfy this, this one. But if the function is convex for any other x in R n we can write the following thing. So, for any other x in R n whatever R n you take whatever x in R n you take not whatever R n sorry whatever R n whatever element in R n you take this result is true because of problem is convex. But you know that grad of f x bar is equal to 0. So, you can put in 0 here to obtain this inequality which proves that x bar is global. So, we have f x greater than equal to f x bar showing that x bar is a global minimum of f. So, for a convex function every local minimum is a global minimum which we have proved already for a general case. Now, we prove it simply for the differentiable case. Now, there are two important classes of convex functions which play an extremely important role in the solution aspects of convex optimization problem. They are mainly the strictly convex problems and strongly convex problems or strictly convex functions. So, we have to know about strictly convex functions and strongly convex functions and by defining these two things we will stop our discourse here for today. So, f from r n to r is strictly convex if for x not equal to y we have f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda x strictly less than lambda of f y plus 1 minus lambda of f x. But lambda has to be now restricted between 0 and 1. So, what is strongly convex? So, we will not go into much of a discussion on this function because this is what we will need. If for x y in R n, so these are all functions from R n to R. So, okay, if you want. I can just write f is from R n to R and f is strongly convex if for x y x y in R n and lambda in 0 1 we have f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda x plus rho. So, there is a rho which is fixed. So, we have this expression true. But this thing is not only less than equal to lambda f y plus 1 minus lambda f x, something more is less than because you know this thing because we non negative this is bigger than this part. So, which means that this part anyway is smaller than this part I mean this whole part. So, which means that every convex function sorry every strongly convex function is automatically convex. So, you have a larger class of functions strongly convex uh, sorry smaller class strongly convex functions 
they are contained in the class of convex functions. In fact, we will show that they are, they are actually contained in the class of strictly convex functions. We will leave it to you to prove this. So, because when x is not equal to y, this becomes a strict inequality. The important feature of this is that when this rho of course, has to be strictly greater than 0. When f is rho strongly convex, this is called the modulus of strong convexity, rho strongly convex and differentiable, then f of y minus f of x is greater than equal to grad of f x y minus x plus rho times norm y minus x square. So, it is homework prove this. Now, once you have this now, I have the, have the reverse question, converse. If I have a differentiable function which satisfies this property with some rho greater than 0, that is for every pair of y and x, I have this expression true, then is the function convex. So, if for a given rho, sorry, if the function strongly convex or rho strongly convex, if not just convex, obviously it is, but if is the function rho strongly convex, if for a given rho greater than 0, we have, if I mark this as A, we have A true for all x, y in R n is f strongly convex with rho. With rho, that is whether it f is rho strongly convex. So this is these two things would be your homework, and it's a good exercise to try it out. So let me tell you that we have now got a very broad idea about convex functions, their behavior how to detect convexity for functions in C2. In fact, if this function, this strongly convex function is twice continuously differentiable, I will put on some additional homeworks that you have to prove that the Hessian matrix is also positive definite. It is not just positive semi definite, it is positive definite. There are many aspects of convexity which can be put in a homework form and which I will supply uh, very soon. Uh, but let me tell you that uh, tomorrow we are going to go into a very important aspect uh, called the separation theorems for convex sets that is given two convex sets in R n or in R 3 which are disjoint that is they have no intersection they are disjoint. Then you can draw a plane or put a plane in between them so, so that one convex set is in one part one side of the plane and another convex set is in the other side of the plane. This whole thing is essentially what optimality is all about. The op optimality conditions are applications of separation theorem and that is what is very, very important and optimality conditions are the soul of algorithms. So, with this homework and with this little introduction to what we are going to do tomorrow, I would tell you a good night and goodbye.